In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, today we are honoring and praying with and for health care professionals. And uh, from our little display down here, uh, there's a little hammer at the bottom. When we were kids, we never were, we used a wimpy hammer like that. We got Dad's big, uh, huge ball-peen hammer and tried to break each other's knees. But when we look at that, we kind of think of doctors and nurses. But do we stop and think of the healthcare professionals who fly life flight on a regular basis? Do we stop and think about the EMTs who race through town in their ambulances to be the first ones there to link up with somebody back at the hospital who's a healthcare professional, who's giving them some advice based on what their computers are telling them? Do we think about the the phlebotomist who takes our blood for our blood work? Do we think about the receptionist when we go into the office who makes sure that we get to the right exam room and see the right doctor? And so there's a whole lot of people involved in the healthcare business that we don't normally think of. And so as we celebrate today, all of those involved in healthcare, let's kind of put our minds at that bigger picture so that we can pray with and for all of them. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The children to come forth for children's liturgy this time. Very good. Oh, we got a small but mighty group here, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you can ask lots of questions, right? Yeah, you want to have other people around to distract you. So go, listen to the Word of God, and we'll be with you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Take your unicorn and go. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst the mothers and those with child, they shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them, and I will lead them to the brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The sung response this morning, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said, Among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done Although 
they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown. They shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only one called by God, just as Aaron was, in the same way. It was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to, to you o lord as jesus was leaving jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd bartimaeus a blind man the son of timaeus sat by the road, roadside begging on hearing that it was jesus of nazareth he began to cry out and say jesus son of david have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him a reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Well, a warm welcome to all the healthcare professionals who have joined us for our celebration today. We're delighted to have you with us. I think everybody here, at least the parishioners, know that I've got macular degeneration, and I have to go in once a month uh, to get my uh, injection so that it doesn't get any worse. And when I go in there, we normally think, that, well, there's a retina specialist who's going to give you that shot. However, let's look at the bigger picture. When I arrive at the place, it's got an automatic door. And when I push the button, it works. Because somebody in the healthcare professions makes sure it works. The place is spotless. Everything looks pristine and clean and neat because somebody in the healthcare profession was there to take care of it. That's two people already. Well, then I go in and I see the receptionist. The receptionist says, you're going to now have to see the, the technician who's going to check your eyes and make sure you can still see. That's four. The fifth is the person who takes the picture so the doctor can see whether the, the macula is getting better, staying the same, or getting worse. And then you see the technician who's going to prep you and uh, I want to tell you, they put a whole load of stuff in there so when that needle hits your eye, you don't feel it. And finally, the retina specialist. Seven people to do one simple injection. All healthcare professionals, all dedicated to the same thing. What we heard in today's gospel, Lord, that I may see. Last week, the two apostles... James and John sneak away from the other ten, and they go over to Jesus and they say, hey, we want a favor. Do anything we ask of you. And Jesus, I can't do that for you. They want to be at one of his right and one is left. He said, I can't do that for you. Sorry, you ain't going to get an answer to that prayer. And yet today, when this blind guy comes up to Jesus and says, Lord, that I may see, no problem. Go and see you're healed. The difference is that James and John go to Jesus with great arrogance, as if they deserve something special. They don't. But this blind guy, like you and me, when we go see our doctors, all we want is to be ordinary human beings who can do what ordinary human beings do. It may be to regulate our heart, it may be to fix our eyes or work on our teeth. It may be to fix our ankles so they work a little better or change our knees because the old ones don't work anymore. It may be because something's going on in our mind that bothers us and we want to go see somebody so that we can be ordinary human beings. And God answers that prayer. God answers that prayer with miracles, obviously. Uh, just last night, I was visiting with some friends of mine who are Lourdes volunteers, and they go every year to spend two weeks at the Shrine in Lourdes, where the sickest of the sick come, and they, they go there in order to be cured, praying for a miracle, praying that they can be ordinary human beings. And sometimes the miracle happens, but most of the time it doesn't. It happens away from the baths. It happens away from anything in the sanctuary. It happens in the hospice, where caring, loving people touch the lives of the sick so they can be ordinary human beings. And so when we think of healthcare professionals, this gospel should immediately leap to mind that God inspires young men and young women to take up those roles, whatever they are. It might just as be as simple as the ambulance driver who never even sees the person in the back. Um, I had, um, what do they call those things? A kidney stone. And they're gonna drag me from Delphus to Lima on the ambulance. I never saw the ambulance driver. But they were willing to race down Elida Road and get me to that hospital as fast as they could. Never saw them, never met them, don't even know who they were. And yet they answered a call from their God 
to be available to use the skill they have to get that ambulance where it needed to be. And so many healthcare professionals will never meet. I have been in a hospital a couple of times. I never met the cook who made my dinner. I did meet the young lady who came to my room to find out what I wanted, but I never met the cook. And yet they're an essential part of the healthcare profession. And we sometimes completely forget them. And yet they're part of that wonderful team so that you and I can make the same request. We want to be ordinary human beings. And they lend their efforts, they lend their skills, they lend their talents to take the place of Jesus Christ to say, go, be healed. And for that, we give great thanks. But sometimes as patients, we forget that when the healing happens, listen to what Jesus has to say to this character. Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has saved you. And our faith in, in the doctors uh, is what makes it work. Many times I've heard people say, if you have the willpower to accept what they're going to do for you, it'll work. And if you don't trust them, it probably won't because we don't let it. And so our faith is so important to what happens with our healthcare professionals. But listen to what Jesus then says. Your faith has saved you. He received his sight. Go your way, Jesus says, and he follows him on the way. And that's why we're here today. We're not in a park someplace. We're not out in front of the, uh, on the top roof of the uh, parking garage over at MCO or any of the other fine hospitals here in town. We're in church because when we understand that these great miracles are happening, we wanna give thanks to God for the people who made those miracles happen. And so we choose this day to offer our thanks to God so that we can offer our thanks to all those in the healthcare professions. And so thank you very much, both God and all those who assist us. However, there's something else here I, I would just love to talk about just very briefly. Whenever I'm getting ready for a homily, I'm always looking for what is there that shouldn't be or what isn't there that I think should be. And today there's a perfect example of that. Um, this is the prophet Jeremiah and he's talking about the end of the Babylonian captivity. And at the very end of this, he says something that would have infuriated the people who heard it the first time. And it just probably washed right off of us like water off the duck's back. I am a father to Israel. That's God talking, okay? God is the father to Israel. Now he says something that's gonna bother everybody who hears it. Ephraim is my firstborn. Do we know who Ephraim was? I think it's a great idea to uh, kind of look up our Sunday readings so that we can know what on earth we're listening to when we come to Mass on a, on a Sunday morning. Anybody know who Ephraim was? So see, you're not going to be upset the way they were. Ephraim was one of Joseph's two sons. Remember who Joseph married? Anybody remember that? The daughter of the high priest of the sun god. The daughter of a pagan high priest. And here we are hundreds, almost a thousand years after Moses leads the people out of Egypt. They settled Ephraim and Manasseh, his brother, as far to the north as they could, right up where modern day Lebanon is today, because they wanted to get them away from Egypt because of their loyalty to their mother's family. They remained as much pagan as they were part of the tribes. And when they, someone heard God himself say, Ephraim is my firstborn, it would have rattled their timbers. 
It would have infuriated them. And yet, if you listen to that opening prayer at today's Mass, God, we want to love your commands. And God's commands is simple. Love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And when God gave that command, he doesn't say, love your neighbor if they look like you. He didn't say, love your neighbor if they think like you. He didn't say, love your neighbor if they pray like you. He doesn't say, love your neighbor if they live in a house like yours. He just says, love your neighbor. And so with great malice aforethought, God puts in this a challenge. Do we love our neighbor who isn't us? Do we love our neighbor who looks different, sounds different, has different cultural practices and beliefs, goes to a different church? Because the command is simple, love them. We must love everyone. And I guarantee if we really put into practice that command, we wouldn't see rockets flying back and forth between Israel and Iran. We wouldn't see the Russians invading Ukraine. We wouldn't see the violence in the Congo. We wouldn't see drug cartels in Mexico. We wouldn't see starvation in North Korea or Venezuela. If we could only, only live that commandment. And so the challenge for all of us today is to find out who Ephraim is in our own life and go out of our way to offer them our love. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God does give us the great command to love one another. And that's why every time we gather together as his faithful people, we raise our voices and prayers very often for people we'll never meet, we'll never get to know, but we can still love. For the church, that we may see our lives with eyes of faith, committed to following Jesus' journey to the cross and to eternal life. Atirna Ishlin. Atirna Ishlin. <laughs> for world leaders, that they may see and be sensitive to the needs of their citizens, striving to support and safety in difficult situations. Athirna Ishlin. Athirna Ishlin Roshka. For world peace and for compassionate caring for those people displaced by war, violence, and social and political or economic upheaval. Athirna Ishlin. Athirna Ishlin Roshka for those who live with disabilities or for those who come to their assistance, that they may find an easing of the burdens they face each day. Athirna Ishlin. Athirna Ishlin Roshka. For physicians, nurses, health professionals, and support staff, that they may find meaning, fulfillment, and a sense of great purpose as they perform the everyday tasks of caring for their patients. Athirna Ishlin. <laughs> for the clergy who serve tirelessly in our Catholic churches, schools, and facilities, 
that they may know of our gratitude, care, and respect. Athirna Ishlin. Athirna Ishlin Roshda. For those affected by extremities of weather and climate, that they may be quickly restored to the normalcy of daily life through the generous support of all. Athirna Ishlin. For Patricia Willoughby, for whom this Mass is celebrated, Athirna Ishlin. Athirna Ishlin Roshda. As a conclusion to our prayers of the faithful today, I will pray the formal words of blessing of the church over healthcare professionals. As I'm doing that, you might want to put in your own mind your favorite healthcare professional. Who is today helping you be a wholesome, whole human being? It might be a friend, it might be a doctor, it might be an ambulance driver, it might be the chef at their back room of the hospital who feeds us so well. Think of those people and the blessings you'd like the God to bestow on them. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. In times long past, you sent us your prophets to teach us your laws and to bear witness to your undying love. You sent us your Son to heal us by word and example that true healing comes from you alone. Send your Spirit upon all health care professionals and fill them all with your wisdom and blessings. Grant that in the time that lies ahead of us, they may devote themselves to their work, to their patience, to all of us, and share what they have learned with others. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And for our visitors, uh, you know, we're the Irish Destination Parish, and so we try to slip some Gaelic in there every now and then. So at the end of the uh, petitions, we ask God, Lord, hear us. Ah, Yarna East Lynn. And then the people out in the, in the crowd say, Lord, graciously hear us. Ah, Yarna East Lynn Roshda. So if you were trying to figure out what the heck we were doing, that's what we were doing. <laughs> Please be seated.
kindness, we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. <clears throat> Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me of my iniquities. Uh, before I say the little prayer, uh, very often I forget to do things that... Uh, are out of the ordinary. Uh, just before the 8 o'clock Mass this morning, our sacristan Rosalie uh, tripped coming down from the uh, tabernacle where she wanted to make sure that the Blessed Sacrament was readily available. And uh, she and Rusty are over at St. Vincent's. Uh, so let's pray for the healthcare professionals who are with her right now, uh, putting the stitches and making sure she's okay so that she can get back here, a complete, human, beautiful little lady and take up her role as our sacristan. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn this morning is number 815, I Received the Living God, number 815. I receive the 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. I hope everybody noticed that we have a guest over here. Uh, last year's eighth grade over at Queen of Apostles School really got into the Eucharistic renewal. Uh, they did some reading about uh, two uh, patrons, uh, Father Manuel, who was going to abandon churches and rescuing tabernacles. I don't know what he did with them or where he put them, but there's a huge collection of them now because of that. And Carlo Acutis, who put together the Vatican's exhibit on miracles revolving around the Blessed Sacrament. They got all excited by it. And so they wanted to do a statue. There it is. They wanted for people to see it. And so it's over here today. Uh, some of this year's eighth graders who are the custodians of this shrine to Blessed Carlo, uh, they're here to take a look at it and see now where does it go next? Uh, where do they want it to be so lots of people can, can see it? If you bought one of those uh, sweatshirts that had the tabernacle on the front and the rosary on the back, you helped pay for that. So you are one of the, the benefactors who made it possible for the kids to get this. So take a look at it before you leave today. It's a, a beautifully done. The same studio that has been doing our outdoor statues, but you can see the quality of their work where it's going to be on the inside of a church rather than out in the elements. Thank you to all our healthcare professionals, whether they're here with us in church, 
whether they're here with us in our minds and in our prayers, whether they're streaming on our live service, thank you to all of you. They are doing miracles every day. And we, we need to make sure <coughs> that somehow we tell them thanks. This is our church's way of doing that. The Lord be with you. With you spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the winds be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And you, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast down to hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 519. Hail, Holy Queen, number 519.